Okay. Call the meeting to order. Uh, first start with the roll call. Commissioner Allen. Present. Commissioner Norwood. Here. Commissioner Skiragusa. Here. Commissioner Roberts. Here. Commissioner Stallings. Here. Commissioner Orr. Here. Mayor Pinkinen. Here. Okay. Uh, item number two, invocation and flag salute. Uh, if I could ask Commissioner Norwood to do the invocation and ask everybody else to follow me with the flag salute. Would you please stand? Bow your heads with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. Thank you for blessing us. Lord, we thank you for our mayor, each one of the councilmen. Lord, we thank you for our city manager, our city assistant city manager, our city attorney, all of the officials, all the department heads. Lord, we thank you for putting us in these positions. And Father, we ask that you continue to bless us and give us wisdom. And we thank you for those that prepared this annual budget report. And Lord, we're asking for your wisdom and your direction for the business of Enid, Oklahoma. We're asking that you touch our nation, touch every family, every church home, every citizen. Lord, please touch us in the name of Jesus and give us strength. Bond us in the hands of love. Lord, remove all division and bring us into unity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Join me in our nation's pledge. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Uh, item number three, hearings. Item 3.1, conduct a public hearing on the proposed 2021-2022 City of Enid budget and related authorities financial plans. This is just where I think the public could have signed up to discuss anything or bring up any uh, discussions that, that you might have. Okay, is this items that have already been covered if they or things that are covered tonight or what? Um, well, after tonight, we'll, we will have covered everything. So uh, I know at the end of the night, we have all all four sections on, so we can talk about anything. Okay. This, this is a required public hearing by the law for anybody that signed up to talk about anything they want to talk about. So I don't know if we have anybody signed up. Um, Summer, do we have anybody signed up? Any. Is there anybody that wants to talk? Check. Uh, if any of the commissioners uh, in reviewing notes from the previous presentations wanted to discuss those, is this the time for them to do that or is it later? Uh, they probably would want to wait until the actual section and that way if there's any... Well, if it's a section that's already been covered that they've looked over and now they have a question, should they bring that up now or at the end? Um, I, I would say that they could talk about it anywhere, but if they're, they can't make a motion during the public hearing, okay. they would have to wait until the actual standing. Yep. Okay, good. And nothing over there? Okay. All righty. Item four, administration. Item 4.1, discuss and take nece any necessary action on the fiscal, 20, fiscal year 2021-2022 seat of Enid budget. And you're up. So uh, uh, before I start, I'll go ahead and let you know. I know some of you didn't get to read my email that I sent last night. The few questions that were asked, the truck to pick up the trash cans in the park, 
it was actually purchased this fiscal year. And they do that almost every day is, is what uh, Corey Buller uh, explained to me uh, this morning. So uh, the air compressor is a very large air compressor. It's towable, uh, have, has its own wheels on it and uh, it's for high pressure and high volume. And it's used to power boring machine for replacing water service lines that go under the roadway without trenching the road. So just real quick. And this is when you can talk about anything we've already talked about, or I can go ahead and start. Okay. Jennifer, I just had a question on um, page 40 and 41. Also relays back to the 90% increase on public arts program. And it just says arts commission for $138,700. According to our ordinance, is there is that coming out of their already fund that they have set with surplus money, or is that being paid for by the general fund? That's paid for by the general fund. The monies are set aside based on uh, the ordinance that is set in place, and a one percent is set aside for for that on any project that's 250,000 to $10 million in that budgeted for that. Okay, so they're asking for 138,700. They are not asking for that. That is just the calculation based on what we have currently budgeted for those capital projects that we're talking about tonight. So based on the total of all of those together, 1% is just coming up higher than it has been um, in the last several years. By 80%? That's, it's based on the projects that are currently budgeted. Okay, so these have been budgeted prior to us taking off this well, new uh, commission. No, it would be the budget that we're, we're proposing right now. So the projects that they're gonna show tonight, it's based on those projects for the FY22 year. And it's anything that's over, that's the 250,000 up to a $10 million project. And they set aside 1%. It's only out of street and alley fund, those projects and um, fund 40, which is capital improvement fund and the street improvement fund. Okay, but I was discussing um, the, 11, the 1155, the public arts funding, which they have their own commission. Which they, well, they, they have an advisory board. Advisory board, yes. Yes, and the, the ordinance states that based on what we budget in our budget book, which this is just a proposed budget right now. Uh, so if any construction pro projects actually got cut, that number would go, would go down. Yeah, let me, let me help on that one, Commissioner. Uh, with the Public Arts Commission ordinance that, that's several variations have passed over the <laughs> past several years, uh, there, there is a statement in there that talks about 1% of capital projects uh, shall be considered to be added to the budget. So what we dutifully do is put in 1% of those capital projects with the constraints that um, Jennifer was telling you about, where it, I think it goes up to 10 million and it's less than, it's not less than 100,000 or what, or what there's some kind of parameter there. So the public arts doesn't really ask for this. It's provided for in the ordinance. However, it is subject to um, your consideration and, and your determination. Also, just so you'll know on those public arts projects that the committee uh, works on, like the one, uh, like the mural um, that's being worked on now for the skate park, those, ultimately come to the city commission, right, Angela? So uh, the Pace Committee has a meeting later this month. I think it's on the 26th. And then I'm assuming that they'll uh, probably approve some variation of that mural, which will come to you. But I'm just trying to give you some information to help you understand. So, so the reason it's a 90% change is because we're doing more capital projects in this budget than we did last year. So therefore, the 1% calculation comes out apparently to 90% more. Right, Jennifer? Yes. Okay. While we're on that subject, I would, 
I'd like to make the proposal to not fund that this year. And if we need to fund it later in the year, we can. Um, I was in, I've been looking into it a little bit. They've got, right now, the Public Arts Commission has over $200,000 in their account. And this $138,000 proposal is a 90% increase from what they got last year. And from the way it sounds, like I said, we can transfer the money later if they need it. But I would rather, I think we have better projects that we can get a better return on investment on for that money at this time, rather than put more money into the account of the public art or the uh, arts commission. All right, art's one of those hard things to define and, and its value is very hard to determine. Um, and not everybody likes every art project. Uh, some like Under Her Wings was the universe, many people did not. I don't think I talked to anybody that dislikes the eagles or, uh, I mean, the uh, the box. Pardon me? Lazy circles in the sky. Yeah, lazy circles in the sky. Uh, I think a lot of people appreciate a lot of the uh, artwork that's on many of the buildings downtown. I think it gives our, our city character. The question about whether there should be $138,000 in the budget when they already have money, is another question altogether. But even if there's 138,000 in their budget, they can't spend it without our authority anyway. So if it needed to be transferred later for some reason, I guess we would have the authority to do that. Uh, but the point is they're not gonna be able to spend it unless they come to us and tell us what they're gonna spend it for. So they have to come up with a suggestion or an idea that they wanna do. It's gotta work their way through their council. Then it comes to us for consideration. Now we try not to second guess every committee that we appoint because then what's the use of having a committee? On the other hand, if we think we are overreaching in an area and think we can spend it more wisely, there's, there's the ability to do that. So this is just really the budget thing. They can't, they're not getting a check at the end of the meeting and they can go out and figure out what to do with 138,000. They have to come with a, to us with a project. And if I said anything wrong, somebody speak up, but I think that's the way that works. Hey, I, I agree with you on that because on the um, um, project that um, Romy had. Yeah, Under Her Wings was the universe. Yeah. Under Her Wings the universe. I, um, I believe it was 30,000 that we had right. That's the max given. Case. And, and, and then the rest of the money she had actually raised yeah. herself. And I think it was over 200 or something. Right. Over $200,000. So on that, I, I, I do have a question. Is there a limited amount that we are allowed to give to an arts project or is it something that? Angela, are you comfortable talking about it a little bit with you? Since you are the staff liaison to the PACE committee, would you, I, I hate to put you on the spot, but I, I think there's a 50, 50 deal. Um, to be honest, I didn't study up on the ordinance before the meeting. Because I know we had given that project thirty thousand, right? Okay, um, I believe there is a limit, and I think it's like five thousand that we can spend without bringing it to the commission. But for anything greater than that amount, you're going to see our projects. And do we do we know what that amount is? When um, Pace can purchase something without commission approval? Yes, before you can before you have to bring it to us. Let me find it in the ordinance real quickly. It's a fairly small amount that is authorized that the city manager can approve, but if Gerald chooses not to approve it, then it will always come to the commission. Well, we give her a little bit of time to, to look at that. Um, I really do appreciate Angela does a lot of things for the city of Enid um, in engineering as project manager, but also this is one of her additional responsibilities. She is a liaison to PACE. So she is at every meeting. She's the one that puts together the agendas and, and does the, uh, the minutes and makes sure that we follow our ordinance. So as she looks that up, she's a great resource for you as she tells you how it works. And I also want to be clear too, um, 
this budget as presented to you can be changed by you. So if so, I agree that you could uh, leave it alone because you're going to approve it. I agree that you could change it if you want to. And I agree that it could be amended any time during the year. Normally, in the general fund, and I'm just going off uh, what I think I used to know, Jennifer, so help me out. Um, in the general fund, when you approve the final budget resolution that approves that budget, you give authority to me or my designee within the, within the law to move funds around within a fund, like general fund. So now I probably wouldn't do that on something like this that may be controversial without coming to you guys to, to have a decision. But just to clarify, within a fund, after you've approved the budget, we can move funds around but we cannot move funds from one fund to another fund. That explicitly takes commission approval. So that's just a little stuff to fill the space while Angela finds the answer. Okay. And um, what I found that our ordinance states is the city manager can approve up to what he's authorized to approve. Um, the only thing that I can think of right now that we have spent money on that did not come to the commission is we are pouring two concrete pads at the under her wing was the universe so that we can place receptacles on them so people have a convenient trash disposal um, nearer to the project. Um, that is coming from the Park, uh, Public Arts Commission money. Um, we did not bring something like that to the commission. And Gerald authorized that expenditure. It's like $1,100. Anything else project related would come to here because I doubt Gerald's going to approve something without bringing it to this, to this body. So I guess there's a, Scott, I think there's a couple of questions. One is, um, do we want to change the ordinance that authorizes 1%? That'd be one question. The other, the other question is the 138,000 that's coming up, if that's the number that's coming up this year, they can't spend it without coming us to tell us how they wanna spend it. And if we wanna reallocate it, it's within our authority. So now it's a budget placeholder based on an ordinance that has previously been approved. Okay, yeah, and we looked, I looked at that ordinance last night and there's no wording that guarantees that the art commission gets 1%. It says the city commission shall consider it's not shall contribute or will contribute, it shall consider. And so this is kind of a, it's kind of a, yeah, it's, it's not really a gray area, it's black and white. It's up to us how much we give them. So it doesn't have to be 1%. All right. Commissioner Orr is correct. That, huh? that, okay. That's certainly correct. That's how the ordinance reads. That's a distinction. So. Shall consider the dedication of up to 1%. Okay. That's so, Angela, you look over, you oversee this board. Thank you very much. Uh, I understand there's been money set aside for the mural over at the skate park to take care of that vast wall of uh, luck and bills. Right. And uh, that it'll be broken up into two pieces. It's naturally kind of that way. Um, and that they've set out uh, requests for proposals of uh, artists across the state to uh, submit uh, artwork and that be selected by the PACE committee. Am I right so far? Correct. And I've heard the number like 48,000 tossed around that they have, is, that's part of all this, is that correct? Our budget is not to exceed 48,000 for that project. We have not encumbered the money, but they have 213,000, I'm wanting to say, in their account currently. And that money was expected to come out of that 213. Right. So to cover that project already. Um, that's all I'll ask for now. I have some other questions about that particular project. So thank you. Okay. Anything else? So Scott, what, what were you asking to do? Well, I just I want to make sure that public tax money is going to good purposes. And right now I see some of these art, this art budget, some of this art, some of this art as 
more of a want than a need. And uh, when I look at some of the art, it's, are we getting any return on our investment? And uh, I, I can think of a couple of things, you know, with the development authority and the Main Street Enid that might better benefit from some of those funds if we have those funds available, where we, we're probably going to get a better return on investment for the taxpayers. That's what I was looking at. Okay. But if we, I'm, I guess I'm okay with it as long as the art projects come to us and we can, we can either turn them down or approve them at that time. But like I said, I just want to make sure we're getting a good investment uh, on the taxpayers' uh, funds. Right. Now, did I speak correctly? Do they, they do have to come here, right? Yes. Okay. They will bring any major project here. I, I will take anything to Gerald that we're considering, and I'm sure he understands okay. that. And I, and I, think, the, uh, I think the art board has been responsible with the funds that they've had over the years. They've been getting the 1% for a number of years and they didn't try to spend every penny in their budget every year because they know sometimes they wanna have a bigger project and if they do that, they can't get it all in one year. So I appreciate the fact that they do have money in the bank already, as you pointed out, 213,000 or whatever. Uh, so I, I think you raise a good point. If they got 213,000, the major project they have on the books is 48. Do they really need 238 more this year? And I guess that's your question, right? Yes, correct. Uh, so. Mayor, one thing that I would suggest is that, and Summer's probably already working on it. I know you're gonna be making some appointments to boards. Right. So uh, the next pace meeting is at the 26th. Yes, on the 26th, we have a uh, meeting to consider the mural. I, I recommend that you appoint somebody, put somebody on that board, and we can bring it on the agenda on the 18th. That way, that person could be at the meeting on the 26th. Because one of the things that, regardless of whether the budget changes or doesn't changes, that, <clears throat> that would be good. That would be a good message to take to that board and for Angela, who goes to all the meetings, is for the board to know if there's a if there's a change in philosophy or something because the way our process is set up even though the project comes to you for approval it comes to you for approval really at the end so on these murals at the skate park when it comes to you it's going to be with proposals to approve it for however much it costs for painting murals there and then you'll be in the situation of having to say yes or no with a vote and so it might be good to know what it is that the commission wants them to focus on maybe or, or, or is gonna be willing to approve just to avoid, yeah. you know, there's been a lot of work put into it. And I gotta tell you a lot of that work, well, it's not just staff work, although Angela does a lot of staff work, the, the board members uh, like Christy Northcutt have put a lot of work into that. So, um, so I'm not saying anything other than just to tell you how the process works. And we can do anything tonight that you want to do if you're making a motion or you can do it on the 18th or you can wait. And you do know you will get to approve those projects because I certainly know for um, what I'm going to call a, a new art project of any kind, uh, I'm, I'm just going to let it work through the process of pace to you guys for you to approve or not approve. But if there are minor things like I see, like Angela talked about, concrete pads for trash cans at the, under her wings, is the universe, I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm just gonna go ahead and say yes on that because I think we need it. The art project's already approved and already there, so. And, and there um, is a section in the, it indicates that the money, 80% is for the acquisition of the art, 10% for maintenance, 10% for administration of projects, and then, and that is in 711.12, and then C indicates that the approval of expenditures of money, um, the, uh, the approval of a artwork is yours. Where, where um, there is a line here that for ongoing work, he would approve the expenditures. So for instance, if you, if part of the to place the art, you need to do a foundation for the art. Then that's where, you know, or there's maintenance or we need to, to clear the site or something. That's the kind of thing 
that the ongoing work of the project, but the selection of the specific, the art piece is, is your, you approve and select the art pieces. The stuff that is, you know, the nuts and bolts of the, of getting it there is the part that, that he has been and that the stat, the ordinance contemplates, he and Angela would be approving, you know, the nuts and bolts, but the idea of the art, the, the, the art itself, not how it gets to the spot. There is one nice section um, of our ordinance that I'd like to point out as well. That is a partnership with our community. Um, if a business wants to do a mural or have a piece of art um, at their business, the city does have a partnership where it's 50-50 matching funds. Um, that does come before you. I know we did, um, we approved a grant for a mural on North Grand and also out at uh, the Kiwanis uh, train depot. So we've had two of those and, and you know, the more people hear about it, we may see more um, use of that part of the ordinance as well. But that at least is a partnering with the businesses in our community. Okay. I might add a couple of items. Number one, uh, former Commissioner Ron Jansen sits on that board, and I think you would find him as conservative of a person as you would find on any, uh, particularly the arts board. Uh, secondly, uh, Oklahoma City was just recognized as the most uh, muraled city in America. They got an award for that, recognized for their murals. And of course, uh, Enid is uh, benefiting from a lot of private investment in murals and uh, so I think that is a good thing. And then the final thought for myself is that, uh, yes, it may come before us, but I always concern myself. We all have a different idea of art is in the eye of the beholder. I believe that's what's been said. And, and I have to agree with that. Uh, art should uh, bring out an emotion and uh, that can go either way. So uh, I don't want to create a slippery slope uh, on this kind of thing, but I am all for spending the money correctly for the citizens of Enid. So I appreciate what we're talking about. It's a good conversation to have. Uh, it just got a lot of different facets. So thank you all for bringing it up. Okay. <laughs> so I... Uh, Scott, did you have something you wanted to do or like, would you like to suggest that it be limited to a certain dollar amount or cut all together? I'm not sure what you think for now. I think for now we're, I'm okay with it. As long as it, these art projects come up before us and we get a yes or no vote on it, I'm okay with that. I, like I said, like Jerry said, you know, it's in the eye of the beholder. And I think some of these art projects we're doing aren't giving back to the city and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what kind of crowd we're catering to on the art because I'm not an art fan. And so it doesn't mean I hate art. It's just that I, I want to make sure that it's we spend the money wisely and put this stuff in places where people are going to see it and uh, and um, make sure that, like I said, we're getting a good read for that money right now. Like I said, I think art in my priority list falls down to below, obviously, streets and infrastructure and I think right now at this time that we're in, I think we've got more pressing needs than we do wants. And uh, like I said, I just want to make sure that our tax dollars are being spent wisely and not, uh, not you know, we're not spending it on something the majority of our own city won't see. And uh, that's all I needed to, but yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. And I appreciate the discussion. That's exactly what these meetings are for. Yes. So. It's like maybe we need to paint the teeth on the bridge that eats trucks. <laughs> I just have one one other question, Angela, on that mural project on the skate park. We're talking, I think you said budgeted like $48,000, which is a high price of money. Right. I said, I've already noticed that that wall's been tagged. 
vandalized. Do we have anything planned to not have it vandalized after we spend $48,000 on it? I might, I might help you with that if you will forgive me. May I give a brief answer? You, because you we had ahead. the park board meeting just Tuesday and this was a big deal. And um, the building I drove by the other day had been tagged. And that's the best thing about painting a building with a mural. They don't get tagged anymore. It is very rare that that happens. However, I will say this, the skate park itself got tagged. Yes. And as I broke through, I didn't notice that. And the city immediately, the parks department, uh, ordered this special fluid that they put on it. And then they you know, hot pressure wash it and uh, it was working, but then it started raining. And so they didn't complete, you know, the job. Uh, my primary question to them was don't use too much pressure from that sprayer because it will etch that cement and the slickness of the coating of the skate park is the most important thing. It's like soccer's got to have grass. Well, that that uh, that cement in there has to be super slick. And Derwin knows about the finishes on these uh, on concrete, and that's a real big deal. So yeah. I don't see how we're going to fix that all the time. Well, that's that's my concern. Are we looking into it? Well, we're going to install cameras. That's the first thing. One thing that I was going to suggest was the cameras, and the second thing I was going to suggest is New York City did it with their subway cars, there's an overlay that can be put over. I don't know if it's budgeted for that, but that would be something that I would consider going further with so that if somebody does spray it, sprays right off with a pressure washer. It doesn't affect the art itself. That is our expectation for this mural, that it will be painted with, and you know, covered with the a coating. Overcoat, the right. overlay with. Right. Um, Commissioner Allen is correct supposedly there's been a lot of surveys done that indicate once you put a mural up, they don't tag it like they do blank walls. But <laughs> let's hope that's true for this one. Knock on that we are planning we're not in the gang. We are planning accordingly. Which right. they do get tagged heavy in gang related areas. I know that from my time with right. gang association that so this is really in its infancy and um, the deadline for submissions is Saturday and we'll gather them and there's a selection committee, um, including people that are outside of the PACE board um, and they will make some recommendations, then we'll review it at PACE and then it will be in front of, uh, of you for consideration. Well, we'll go through artist selections and they'll discuss paint types and what they're planning on doing. And then it will come to you, I think, right now our estimated schedule is August to bring it. Can, can you refresh my memory? Where, where is the skate park at again? Fifth, Fifth and, and Randolph. Randolph. I'm sorry, Randolph and what? Fifth. Okay. Fifth. Yeah, Fifth. Fifth and Randolph. Between Randolph and uh, Broadway. Okay, thank you. But feel free to contact me if you ever have any questions. You can contact me directly. I appreciate it. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Great. There's your for discussion on that. Anybody else have anything else they'd like to bring up before we get into session? Okay. Go ahead. Here. Okay. Since he, we have a motion on the board, does he need to rescind that? I don't think we had a motion, do we? I think he's. Think so. He made a motion, but there was yeah. no second. I believe he said a motion. Uh, he made a motion, uh, but there was no second. Yeah. Without a second, it dies. Okay. No, there was no motion. I didn't make a motion. No. I just, Keith Saragusa started the whole conversation by making a motion. I, I started a discussion. <laughs> well, I thought you said you wanted... Summer will get the minutes correct. I know she will, Summer. I feel for you, but you <laughs> get them right. But you didn't have... As far as you know, you didn't have a motion. I didn't have a motion. Okay. I had one okay. discussion. It's interpreted. Even if, even if there was, uh, Carol's right, there was no second, so it, the motion would have died. But thanks for bringing that up. All right, let's go ahead. Okay. 
these are just the few changes that we have made so far. Uh, I mentioned on Tuesday night that we have an increase to police fund from the general fund. We increased their transfer a little bit. And then uh, we had the motion to increase golf expenses by 10,000. We also increased uh, the transfer out from general fund to cover those expenses. So these are the two changes that are already set in motion. Thank you. And this is a revised page 12 based on the changes that I just mentioned. So those changes uh, decreased the police deficit. It was at a million and it reduced that to 690,000. And golf is still about balanced budget. And general funds since transferred out to the police and the golf, it did increase the deficit um, from 1.4 to the 1.77. Okay. So this shows the numbers after the changes. Um, general fund, our revenues are coming in over 91% at the end of March. And uh, normally around that time, it would be approximately 75%. So this year we're doing quite well. Um, believe that is due to us reducing the amount on sales tax last year for the COVID unknowns, but sales tax is coming in um, actually a little higher by 2% from what we actually received last year. So we're doing uh, pretty well. So we don't see any problem with the uh, general fund deficit being covered at a later time. And plus we have the increased fund balance to cover that. And police usually starts out with a deficit each year. Uh, they always uh, budget to spend more than 30% of their public safety tax, which they use fund balance to do that uh, on their um, capital items. So they usually start out with a deficit, but they usually end uh, the year with a surplus. So uh, we don't see, and they've also been saving up their capital money to do their um, training center. So they've been planning for this. So tonight we'll be discussing the seven funds identified in green, street and alley fund, capital improvement fund, street improvement fund, sanitary sewer capital improvement fund, stormwater and water capital improvement fund. I also have on here capital projects escrow fund, but it does not have any project that go through it. It is just used as the transferring of the fees that have been collected uh, to stormwater projects uh, that are in those specific basins. And I think I mentioned that the first night we met. Um, so we have all sections on the agenda tonight. So you can bring up any sections that we've discussed before or anything that we'll discuss this evening. I do have a, a printout that I gave you for a street history, just a little information for you to have, um, just to show that we have attempted over several years increasing of how much we spend on streets each year. And we are at estimating, proposing for these projects that we will discuss tonight, uh, that engineering will discuss at 9.1 for streets, 9.1 million, which that's the highest that we've had um, for all the data that I had collected. So. so you're saying that's the most money ever spent on streets in Enid for the time you've been tracking it? Well, I have data here through 2000, from 2014 forward. So it's a long time. Yeah. Just Good. Ever. So it's, it's easy to tell the public that we're spending $9 million on streets. If we did it every year for 10 years, we'd still be behind. So I'm darn glad we're spending $9 million. Thank you very much. Okay. This is a feather in your cap. You got to tell your people this, you know, and, it's and the good deal. And the good thing is Jerry, we have the equipment to do it. Yeah. You know, we've purchased the machine um, for the overlays, um, a, a wise investment. So, I mean, we're seeing improvement going on around town. It's not like we're just, you know, stacking money and not doing anything with it. So thanks, Gerald. 
and, and Scott. So we're well, it's tribute to, to, to city staff and you guys. Uh, we, we, we know streets are important to all of us. And as Commissioner Allen said, it's still not enough. So I know I'm probably going to start talking more with staff and you and the public at some point um, about um, seeing if we can't challenge ourselves to see if we can do 10 million a year for five years. And so uh, we're going to do our best to make that come true. Right, Jennifer and Chris? And uh, but we're starting this year with 9.1 in the budget, and we think that's a great start. And we're probably going to talk a little bit more about streets at the study session on the 18th. I'll kind of show you a distribution of where the streets are. Talk more about the criteria of how the streets have gotten selected, and and probably try to answer some more questions about that Tuesday in study session. Yeah, and, and it was really nice the um, slideshow that we got a few months back that Everett had given. I was pretty amazed about that. But I do have a question on street and alley, if I may ask. Um, when it comes to the alleys and the cleanup, do we um, contract that out to different contractors to clean up the trees and brush and stuff in our alleys or what? I can answer that question, Commissioner. Unfortunately, because <laughs> of the shortage of resources overall, we focused on streets and abandoned alleys for the most part uh, a long, long, long time ago, many decades ago from stop picking up trash in all of the alleys. There are still some alleys that we actively use and we do our best to maintain, um, but most alleys we we do not, uh, I guess I can say we don't actively maintain. However, if there is a problem someplace, we will do our best. Uh, I'm sure there's a problem a lot of places, but uh, we will do our best to address it. Um, our challenge is we have unlimited needs and limited resources. So we're, we're putting them on streets and, uh, but we can, um, we, and we have helped out in some areas. So that's probably not a good answer for you, Commissioner, but it's an honest answer. Yeah, Mr. Terrell, I've noticed, you know, there's different crews in different areas of town that have came out and, and uh, I don't know if it's the electric company or what, but they've cleaned a lot of the, the uh, limbs and branches off away from the power lines. I I've noticed a lot of that. Yes, OG&E is very active right now all over the city in, in alleys and on streets, and we're thankful for that because that takes care of some of the problem, at least in some of the alleys. Okay, our next slide just shows the total amount in each of those funds and the page number that they are on. Um, this should be starting with page 104 and should go one right after the other until we get to the end. So they're at least in order. We won't be jumping all over the place. But these totals, they'll be on several slides and they'll have, engineering will have those totals. So I'll move on. This just shows the variance compared to what we budgeted for FY21. So you can see it is 5.4 million higher than what we budgeted for this year. This slide shows our revenues. Uh, most all of the capital improvement program the funding comes from an EMA transfer, except just a, a few that we have. If we have a reimbursement into that uh, fund, like a cost share, or we have capital recovery in some of our funds, um, Fund 30 actually is where the vehicle license tax is posted, and that comes from the county. And then there's a gasoline tax that comes from the state. And then a few of our funds also have interest. Fund 43 is the only one that we pass through the exact amount of the build revenue that comes across on the water bills. And that amount goes straight to that fund monthly. And as I mentioned on the escrow fund, there's no projects that are performed from that that show expensed in that. Uh, the revenue shows as a developer fee based on each basin that they are doing any development in. And if stormwater has a project within those basins, when we collect enough money that there's even money that could be transferred, it is transferred to stormwater. So we'll have uh, all of these on tonight's agenda. 
And by the end of this meeting, I would like to uh, gather any and all revisions and to see if we can bring you a, um, a ready draft for Tuesday's meeting. But at this time, I probably will just go ahead and let engineering take over. Okay, thank you. So what we're gonna go through now is the projects that we've budgeted for this coming fiscal year, uh, basically in the capital uh, improvement plant projects uh, budget. Um, second, next slide. And as Jennifer said, these will be the funds that we're, we're gonna be talking about. Um, street and alley, capital improvement, street improvement, sanitary sewer, stormwater, and then uh, water capital improvement. And so what we'll do is we'll start with the, uh, the street and alley. And we're trying a new technology this year, You've seen it once before. Um, bear with us. What we found is we found that as we use GIS, uh, which is our, our overlay tool that gives us our geographic information, it, the, the way you can use the layering and the data collection and keeping the data, we've gotten more and more uh, tools that we've been able to use with it. And so now we're bringing it with this to kind of help show you where, where our projects are going. And as time goes on, this this tool will actually be progressed quite a bit. Um, street and Alley Fund, which is Fund 30. Uh, these are what we call the local street projects. These are, these are heavy reconstruction of projects, of streets that have been selected through Public Works and, and uh, the city manager. Uh, then we run and do the design work and then contract them out. Uh, the first one that we have here is East Maple. Okay, as you can see, it runs between uh, 10th and 16th. This one has already been on contract. We, we awarded the base bid. And what this, uh, this budget allows us to do is to add the remainder of that work and finish that street. It's a uh, complete reconstruction. Uh, Waterline relocation, I believe, has already been accomplished. And we're going from there, okay? I thank you for that. You do? <laughs> the, line, the line movement and everything else and the fact that I had an officer ask me about that street today and I was like, it's in the plan. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> uh, the next one is Birch uh, running from 16th to 26th. This is on the north side of, northeast side of town. Uh, it's, it's a fairly lengthy run. And as you can see, it's going to be pretty expensive. Uh, there's a lot of water line problems that we have in this area as well. And as, as we normally do, when we rebuild a street, we take the water line out from under the street. The worst thing that we can do is build a brand new concrete street and then cut it to fix a water line. And that one's close to three quarters of a mile or so. The next street is uh, Roseanne. This is one that we um, experienced a lot of damage at the, during the, the major freeze and the street literally cratered in the center. Uh, the good news is, is we've got, it's got a real good curb and gutter section. Uh, there's a little bit of water line that we're gonna have to re relocate um, and we're doing these designs in house, uh, but it'll be, it'll go back with concrete and it'll go pretty quick. Chris, you might give us a little bit of overview on where some of these streets are. I've okay. Never, I've never been on Roseanne, I think. <laughs> well, that's kind of well, well with up in Scott's area. Yes. Yeah. It's smack dab in the middle of Ward One. <laughs> that's in the Seven Pines. You got the street. cross streets there. Seven Pines. Okay. That's all in Pines. Yeah. Thanks. Just coming off of Randolph. Yeah. Going north. I think it's called Seven Pines Edition, isn't it? Does that help? 
I do. Okay. Um, and the last one that we have uh, on the local street project is West Elm, uh, Washington Dan to Van, Van Buren. This one is roughly on the other side of Van Buren, just north of us. Uh, you'll, you've noticed that if there's 2,600 feet of road and, and 1,400 feet of water line, we have been in the process of relocating these water lines, um, in particular for this one. So that part is already done. There's still a small amount that we need to do. And that one's going to be roughly 1.2 million once you do both the water line and the street. That's in the Kenwood edition. Will that yes. assist with the fire department with moving that particular line? We have not run the model on that to know that it will. Uh, that's something that we had already been planning on this one coming up. So we really didn't, didn't, didn't take the time to do that. Once we get the water line changed over, we'll ask Ken to reflow the hydrants and see what that does. I believe the Kenwood one is the third one uh, area that they're wanting to improve yes. fire flows. And so we'll have plenty of time to know because we know what the impact of this one is. And then once we've done that and we'll run the model, our <laughs> hydraulic model and solve. I was figuring that line was like much in the middle of the Kenwood edition. Yes. I was wondering if that's going to help their flow a little bit. Hard to say until we get it, get it modeled. Okay. There's also uh, $600,000 that's been budgeted for public works to do what they call their street improvement project or point repair. Um, that's where they go in and do some of our smaller repairs in concrete and do some of the overlays of the asphalt streets that do not have curb and gutter sections or don't and don't have uh, stormwater problems. Uh, so they can cover a lot more um, mi lane miles, if you will, um, through that. So, and that's one of the ones that where you've seen a lot of the smaller repairs across town. And so it's the combination of the heavy maintenance and reconstruction and then fixing the little, the smaller spots that's really making a, a difference in, in the way the streets are looking around town. Do we have any questions on that particular part? Yeah, I do. Um, I wanted to ask, Gerald, how are we looking on uh, some watery line pay replacement in Ward 2? Um, sorry, Gerald, I didn't see you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. Yes, sir. I, I wanted, uh, while Chris was talking about the water line replacements, I wanted to know as far as uh, war two, how are we looking as far as um, capital improvement on water lines in, in war two? Well, specifically in war two, uh, were you talking about the Leona Mitchell water line? I hadn't got to water improvement okay. yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Water line improvements, uh, he's going to talk about it. Leona Mitchell is in the budget. Uh, to loop a water line in there to improve the fire flows for the protection of, of property and also to support development in that area. So that's the primary area. Uh, I think that's a million and a half, and he's going to talk about it in just a minute. Um, outside of that, what we typically do on water lines is uh, when a water line needs to be replaced anywhere, um, we'll, we'll put it on the, on the, um, in the, We also have a project a program that we call the, um, the, the commercial and the residential sidewalk partnership program. That allows people who, and, and businesses who have sidewalks that are in need of repair in front of their houses or businesses uh, to make application. And we kind of split the share of the cost share with them on those. It's been a, it's been a really pro popular one for us. And it's a budgeted at twenty five thousand each. Okay. Is that about what we usually fund for that? 20? Yes, that is about. What is it normally used up, or is it normally not? Or um, it's rarely do we completely run out, okay. but we've always been able to use those funds in other parts of the of the projects that we have in there. If we get towards the end of the the budget year and we don't have any applicants, okay, we'll apply them to to streets or sidewalks. Okay. You said it's at twenty five thousand now each. Okay, each. Okay, twenty five for residential and twenty five <laughs> for commercial. That's great. Okay, now transitioning to capital or capital improvement funds, which is fund forty. 
Um, these are the ones where we do a lot of our improvements and expansions. Um, and the first ones up are the are what we call uh, are the we call them must pays because they're things that we've already agreed to do. First one is a million dollars for the next phase of the transportation on the soccer complex. Um, we're well on our way. Uh, the, the contractor has done some pretty nice work out there on the transportation side. If you've been by there, you'll notice the XLD cell lane has been built and the road on the north end has been, been constructed. So they're now working on the parking lots. And the intent here is to continue the work on the parking lots and see how far the money goes. Uh, the next one is the landfill permitting. The next phase of that, and that's three hundred thousand uh, dollars. We've got our own landfill, and we operate it, and we're looking at expanding to the south. We own the property, um, but the permitting process is relatively expensive and very time-consuming, and it, it'll take us three to five years to get a permit to open this. So that's what we're going to—that's what we're working towards. So you should see this come back another couple more times. Okay. The. Uh... The system that we have for retrieving the methane gas, will that expand to the south as this does? Yes, it can. Okay. Um, there will probably be, this is a little further out in the future. Yeah. Um, there, there may have to be a little more negotiating on the agreement on, on and establishing easements for those collections, but uh, they're very much aware that we're expecting to expand our landfill. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next two projects that we have concern upgrades to the Great Plains building. Uh, the first one is to replace the roof. As you know, the roof was in pretty sad shape. Um, and, and so that's the first one we're going to do. And then the next one is making some ADA improvements to make that a little more usable to the public. Okay. Uh, the next one is uh, solid waste master planning. Uh, the public utility director who is responsible for solid waste is wanting to start a, and plan out how he's going to transition from maximizing the existing land that we have and opening the new cells to the south when that gets permitted. And that's just his opportunity to look into the future and, and get a plan together. Uh, we also have a project to uh, improve the lightheads there on Cleveland and 412. Uh, the goal here is uh, to change the head so that your left turn lanes will be flashing yellow arrows as opposed to green and red, which will, should make a lot of the... <laughs> I think they breed in Oklahoma, folks. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big thing. It, it's actually our worst performing intersection. It's what? Our worst performing intersection. Yeah. Well, Derwin and I teamed up on that because it's we split the street. <laughs> and, uh, and we just, Derwin with yeah. winners. Yeah. <laughs> Good day. Yeah. Commissioner Allen, I will admit, I do not drive down Gary because of that intersection. I used to take root course. <laughs> <laughs> or Willow. <laughs> Um, we're we're really excited to see that happen and, and hoping that it'll make a it'll make a difference. Okay, but it, it has always been a problem for us. Uh, the next item, there's actually the the service center uh, gate is kind of plugged in between the four items that are dealing with traffic or traffic control. Uh, so I'm going to address that one first. Uh, the gates are are really in sad shape and they need to be replaced. And that's, that's based the service center, and that's where public works and public utilities are. Those other items down there are reoccurring uh, maintenance items and investment in technology and replacing obsolete equipment for our traffic control system. Um, it's something that we've been working on for several years, and the, the, the goal is to have that information back here Hopefully on Tuesday night, Daryl. That Tuesday night you were going to bring them in, tech services. Yes. Okay. Actually, so, no, no, we're going to do that June the third. Sorry. June third. Yeah, June okay. third. So June the third, we'll have a presentation for for you from Public Works and Tech Services, and those are the people that are responsible for these systems, on what all they're doing and what the improvements are. So you'll get a much better uh, view of everything that's going on and how it all plays together. Because if we try to explain it to you by the piece parts, sometimes it doesn't work 
do, it doesn't develop a good picture for you. Okay. And so that's the rewiring the intersections uh, for the traffic lights, traffic detection, batteries, and captains. Okay. The next part of capital improvement uh, is going to be the property maintenance and repairs. This is where we do some of our uh, maintenance and repairs of buildings and we take care of our um, ADA compliance investments that we, we are doing. And so we budget 300,000 a year for those. Um, currently the tentative plan is to do some improvements at the pool um, and then possibly another intersection at Independence and replace some of those. That has not all been finalized yet. Um, obviously a, you, know, you can have an input on that, uh, but that comes through the ADA advisory board as, as a recommendation. Okay. Uh, as we heard Tuesday night, there's a need to do some waterproofing of the exterior of this building. And that's what that 150,000 is for. And then the Metal Lake Golf Course, uh, they, they want to make some improvements on their patio. They're on the, uh, on the east side. And then to do renovations, begin the reno renovations of the snack bar inside. Any questions on that? Okay, the next one is uh, our major reconstruction and overlay projects. This is uh, the top one is the, the Cleveland Street north of the railroad. Um, you'll notice that this has been one that's been a challenge for us to successfully complete. We've had a num number of issues that we've been, been working on. We've got the drainage problem solved. The contract's been awarded. The work will get started shortly. Um, we're starting on replacing, uh, relocating a portion of the water line now. As that's going on. Uh, we still have some properties that we need to acquire, uh, which we're, we're trying to get over those as well. Once those are done, we'll relocate the rest of that water line, uh, double check that og &E is out of the way in, in at and and then we'll certify that open for that the right-of-way is clear, and then we'll take that to ODOT for bidding. Are, are we expanding to the right, the east side of Cleveland on this? For the most part, yes. Here? Yes. It, it's, we might go a little bit west, but it's, it's, we kind of need all of that. There's not a lot of room over there. Okay. Uh, the next one is the relocation of the utilities uh, at the intersection of Garland Road and Randolph. As you know, this year we're doing the design work of, we finished the design work of this intersection last year, and we're doing the design work from the south end of that intersection down to 412. So as you can see, the plan is to get the design done, utilities relocated, acquire any necessary right away, and then take these to ODOT and hopefully have them participate with us uh, during construction. And that's how we get to leverage some of those dollars. So they tried to widen like uh, four lanes, two going each way, starting at that intersection going south or right? On this intersection? Yes. Garland, four yeah. lanes each. Well, Garland south of, what'd you say? Randolph. Randolph. South. Oh, south. Yes, to 412. Yeah. Okay. But it's going to be expanded to four lanes? Or no? Um, the intersection is five lane, but the, the road is only four. Right. That's what I meant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then the, then the intersection leg going down Randolph is going to be three lanes. Or, yeah, three lanes. Right. Okay. Uh, we have some park projects here as well. The first one is the, uh, the Metal Lake Trail to, to Vance. Uh, what we're going to try to do is get this first segment of the trail taken care of, get it construction, constructed. Uh, we do have a design from approximately the horseshoes uh, area to south to the, to the base. And so we're breaking this up into smaller chunks and hopefully getting some construction done. Okay. Um, and as we talked about uh, a couple weeks ago, the folks at, uh, at Parks and Rec, they're outside of the fence at the service center. 
And so they're looking for a security gate to kind of secure their area as well. So that's what that's about. And then we want to do some improvements at Kellett Park. And that's fencing and roofing, uh, kind of investment into the infrastructure that we already have. Um, you'll recall we did some upgrades to uh, the bleachers and the parking for compliance for accessibility. Uh, last year, two years ago, we did upgrade, upgrades on the power and the ballpark lights on one field. And uh, as we go along and, and resources become available, we can change out the other ones. And then we brought back uh, the shoreline stabilization at Metal Lake Park. This is another one of those that has been somewhat of a challenge. Um, it's not been the easiest one to get done. There's been a number of issues, timing, rain, because we have to drain the lake somewhat to get, get it worked. And I think we've had conversations about that one as well, correct? Okay. So now let's move on to uh, street improvement. <clears throat> Excuse me. We do have a thing that we call capital recovery that's associated with streets, water, and sewer lines. Uh, the ordinance allows that developers, while they're putting in infrastructure to, to meet the needs of their development, if they will create and build extra capacity, then they can enter what we call capital recovery uh, program which allows them to recoup some of their cost as other users come online. The plastic example is a water line and that meets more than your needs and more than the ordinance, you get into capital recovery. Every time somebody else taps into that water line, they pay a prorated share and we manage the program and we try to check back to the original developer. Okay. Um, Reconstruction and overlay. This is where we take care of our street improvements in our arterial streets. Um, we're, first one is a, what we call another one we call must pay. This is the mill and overlay of, of uh, Randolph between uh, Washington and 7th Street. You know that we awarded the contract for, for that work in this budget year. We awarded the base bid, which was con the construction of the concrete work, uh, curbs and corn corner nodes, things of that nature. And then this will put the, the mill and overlay, the actual asphalt street on uh, this. As you know, the, the water line is being relocate, relocated now. Uh, and that should be done hopefully by the summertime. And we also have another one under on here on Randolph from 26th to 30th. That one was awarded last time. Uh, that's for a reconstruction of this street. Uh, the water line has already been relocated. We did that previously. And these remaining, these funds, this 150,000 is really what we need to finish the sidewalks on that street. We came up a little short in our budget. Um, and, but that's pretty much normally how we do that. We'll do a base bid and then a couple of alternates to make sure that we get an executable contract and a project, and, and then in, in the next budget year, we'll find, if we can find the resources, we'll add the additional work. Any questions about those two? And then looking into the, uh, into the next year, what we've also asked for is a couple hundred thousand dollars to start the design process of Randolph from 7th to 17th. This is going further east, because uh, you'll recall that Seventh is, is on the east side of the uh, Randolph Bridge at 4th Street, which nobody knows is there until we tore it up, uh, which is now open again. And so this will take it from 7th on to 17th. We'll do the design for the, uh, the water line if it, and we'll look at the stormwater and then the design for the mill and overlay. Okay, stepping on to uh, fund 42. <coughs> excuse me, which is our sanitary sewer programs. Uh, these are, are really the projects, the programs and the, the projects that, that keep us out of trouble for the most part and keeps our systems working. Uh, the first one is um, our standard 
uh, infiltration and over inflow uh, point repair projects. Um, we take and we video the, the sanitary sewers a certain amount every year, pick out the ones that need to be repaired, and then we repair them. That's what this is for. Um, we have the 54th Street lift station upgrades planned. Um, this one will be coming to you. We tried to bid this out this year um, and the bids came in extremely high and we just cannot justify the, the numbers. They're just too high, we, we don't understand. So we're falling back, we're taking a look, we're inquiring on from a couple of the other companies that did not bid uh, why the price was, why the, the bid that we got was so high. And so this is kind of what we do when we find numbers that we don't like. And so this is a continuation of that. And the whole plan, the whole intent here is to increase the capacity of that lift station so that we can take the, the, the sewer from the industrial area and get it to the plant. So we're, we're looking into the future and trying and getting ready for expansion really is what we're doing. <clears throat> we have another one, um, hydrogen sulfide issue in the headworks building at our sewer plant. Uh, this is one that is, has, you know, we've, it's been a challenge for us again. Um, and we're looking at ways to solve it. Um, and we think we, I think we're finding, finally getting to the point where we get an executable solution. And from there, we will probably come back for a budget in the next year to actually. Do, do we um, make use of the old plant for any reason or do, is it a completely? <clears throat> we make use of the old plant for sludge handling. Okay, where it's, that's, you'll see those are belt press project as well. Uh, that's where the sludge gets pumped over there. It gets dewatered and then it gets taken out to the landfill. Saw that. Okay. Um, we have a couple of lift stations. We have the one at the airport that uh, we're gonna work on, on rehabilitating. Uh, and these are periodic maintenance for us. Uh, we, we've got several in town and we pick three and we go and work them and, and get them upgraded and fix what's wrong and prevent any downtime. Uh, we've got one at the Loves um, lift station at the Loves gas station there on uh, 42nd Street. And then one at uh, 6th Street, which is, should be a, Give you an idea on where that one is at. Okay. The next project that we have is the um, the next phase of doing the belt press. Um, these are our belt presses that have, have been around for quite some time, and they're we're kind of concerned about them that that we would start to lose them. So we're working on replacing them. And this is hopefully, this is intended to get us through, through the design, the selection and the construction or, or replacement of those belt presses. And if you're really excited about it, I'm sure we can get you a tour. <laughs> okay, next fun, fun 43. Fun 43 is stormwater. Uh, and on our, our flood control projects that we've got here. Uh, the first one is Chestnut over by 10th Street. You'll recall earlier this year that Chestnut kind of caved in <laughs> on us over there uh, because one of our large 30-inch uh, stormwater um, pipes collapsed. It was a tile, overlaid tile pipe. <laughs> and a pipe and it just gave up. And so what we're doing is we're replacing the rest of that that we know is gonna to start to go south on us soon. So that's what that one's about. Uh, the next one is at the soccer complex. <clears throat> You'll recall that we acquired the right of way on the south side of route there uh, not too long ago. Well, the purpose of that right of way is to get a box structure underneath the route to allow the stormwater to flow 
uh, off the soccer park and and to make it down to the uh, to the uh, the drainage south of there, uh, which is floodplain, by the way, and to widen eventually widen route at some point once the traffic and if the traffic into the soccer park requires it, we'll have the right of way we need. Okay. Uh, the next one is um, the permanent repairs at Harding. Uh, this one is you'll recall we had a we had ramjack pump type company punch uh, some steel pins through our stormwater pipe and caved it in. We've gotten that replaced. We think it's going to be okay, but we're not real sure yet. Um, so we're going to see how it performs um, and and make sure that we did get all of the solution. Uh, the next one is in increasing the capacity at the uh, Willow Detention. Willow Detention is the uh, stormwater detention facility over by the current soccer fields, which is uh, just north of the service center. And so as we bring that water off of Cleveland over here to this detention facility, we need to increase the capacity just a little bit. And that's what this is for. Okay. On Corman Road, south of, uh, of downtown, on right just off of it, uh, 81, there's a box structure down there that's needed some attention. And so the plan here is to reconstruct that box. We also have a project to do some additional LIDAR testing of the, uh, the old Boggy, Boggy Creek uh, box channel. Uh, what prompted this is when we did, when we took a look at what was happening at Randolph and Fourth Street, and we noticed that some of the older boxes were starting to show signs of fatigue. Uh, we wanted to capture a baseline, if you will, on what all our boxes are like underground. Uh, so at some point in the future, we can go back and take another look and catch them as they weaken before they fail. Uh, the last two are box structures down on Southgate Road. Now this is uh, uh, <clears throat> Southgate and, and Garland. Uh, these two box structures are really in close proximity. They're both on the screen there. Um, they're wooden structures from way back. And the one on the south side of Southgate Road um, it is starting to collapse, to fail. The head balls are. And so we've load limited the bridge, that box. And this project will allow us to design new ones and get them out to bid for construction. Okay. The next fund that we're going to talk about is the Water Capital Improvement Fund. We have a couple in the budget, items in the budget there. Um, uh, Chris, on the last one, yes. talking about Southgate. Um, this is a mile south of the park. Huh? This is a mile south of the soccer complex. South of soccer. Okay. All right. I was thinking about the work that the county's doing on Southgate Road, but that's a lot further east. East, yes, that's on the east side of 81. All right, good, thank okay. you. Uh, we've got a couple of items in the project, in the uh, budget for public works, and, or excuse me, public utilities, um, that deal with maintenance of our hydraulic system, hydrants, um, air valves, and inspections of, of water. Um, the next one is going to be what we call the lead and copper pro program. It's the next phase of that, that study and, and investigation. This is actually a DEQ project uh, called corrosion prevention. Um, and so that's what, what's driving this requirement. And so what we're doing is we're, we're starting to, to figure out where are we at on that? Do we have lead pipes? Do we have service lines? Um, I don't think we have very, I don't think we have any lead uh, public lines, but we are concerned somewhat with lead service lines as well. Okay, the next one is the, um, the Ames raw water line. 
And this is part of our well-filled improvement program, uh, which is something that we do every year. Uh, this one in particular, the, the intent of the program, this project is to build a water line, a new water line from the Ames plant to the 42 inch line on 412 to bring all our groundwater to a central location when we stand up our surface water treatment plant associated with the COP program. And so this year's part of that project is land acquisition and design. And then at some point in the future, we'll come back to you looking for construction. You will recall that when we first put this together, it had an $8 million price tag on it. I think that's probably close to what the construction is going to be. Chris, is this for a backup in case we need an increase of water or is it for urgency or what? <clears throat> well, this serves two purposes. Um, our main water transmission line coming from the Ames Drummond well field was put back in the 50s. It's so when it was constructed. And it's, it has truly reached the end of its service life. And you'll recall last summer, we had a contractor nick the bottom of that water line right next to the soccer park, right? And we spent $70,000 fixing it. It was that, I mean, it's, it's that old, it's just a challenge to fix. And so the purpose of this is twofold, bring all the groundwater into town in one place at one location so we can blend it with the surface water and then to replace that obsolete water line. Okay. The next one is the America Water Infrastructure Act uh, preliminary study. Uh, this is a requirement that came out of DE, or excuse me, out of EPA. And this requires us to evaluate our water system to, to include the control system for security, resiliency, and, and to ensure that it's protected from um, damage and attack. Next one is the, um, the, the water line going along East uh, Garriott, right before we get to get us into the railroad tracks. Uh, we've got a, f a little bit of a flow issue in this area. Um, there's, we've done a couple of projects to date. This one will help finish that and complete that line underneath the railroad tracks, which will help improve flows to the east side of town. And excuse me, the last one is the water line at Leona Mitchell. This is the one that runs down um, all the way from Garriott to the apartments. Uh, this one is currently in design in-house uh, with the intent and the goal to get this out to bid this year. Thank you so much. Anytime. Water system in this area is old enough that this yeah. creates some concern for us. And this is the fire department's number one priority for improving fire flows. Okay, that concludes close to $20 million worth of work. It's 12 months. <clears throat> Any questions? Yes, Chris, uh, I'm going to go back to uh, Metal Lake and uh, stabilizing the shoreline. Uh, are we going to use rock there? No, what we will use is a what we call an armored mat, which we'll pick a mat that's a matting material that will that you stake to the ground, you anchor it, and it 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 will look a little better than gravel or uh, riprap, uh, and you don't have the problem that you have with snakes. Right. Right. And we Does it scare off geese? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, sir. <laughs> but I could look. <laughs> it just there's a lot of geese traffic out there. Goose traffic. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, that concludes my briefing. Okay. Thank you. Okay, ready to move to five? 
recess to convene as the Enid Municipal Authority. Item six, tr all trustees of the Enid Municipal Authority special meeting are in attendance. Item seven, Enid Municipal Authority special meeting is now in session. 7.1, discuss and take necessary action on fiscal year 2021-2022 Enid Municipal Authority financial plan. Jennifer. I don't have anything for slide wise. So if there's anything that you would like particular answers to, uh, I can either try to bring that up or um, any other questions in this section. Okay. Okay. I guess I don't see any. Uh, then item number eight, adjourn to convene as the Enid Economic Development Authority. Item number nine, all trustees of the Enid Economic Development Authority special meeting are in attendance. Item number 10, Enid Economic Development Authority special meeting is now in session. 10.1, discuss and take necessary action on the fiscal year 2021-2022 Enid Economic Development Authority financial plan. This was also discussed on Tuesday evening. Okay. So if you have any questions. Okay. All right, seeing none, item 11, adjourn to convene as the Enid Public Transportation Authority. Item number 12, all trustees of the Enid Public Transportation Authority special meeting are in attendance. Item number 13, Enid Public Transportation Authority special meeting is now in session. Item 13.1, discuss and take any necessary action on a fiscal year 2021-2022 Enid Public Transportation Authority financial plan. Again, looking for any questions, if anybody had any right. follow-up. Okay, all right, seeing none, item 14, adjourn to reconvene the Enid City Commission. Item number 15, adjourned. Uh, we'll see everybody Tuesday night.